Hello, I'm here in the uh, sixth part, sixth part of, on the painting tutorial, painting and assembling tutorial of the Razor Wing Jack Fighter. And the next step I will work on is uh, the weapons, and I will start with the different missiles. I want to magnetize them to be able to change. And now I know that the mono seat is going to be my preferred selection, uh, but maybe in future this is changing. So to be able to do that, I will use these small magnets and I will try to keep always, we have to keep always the same polarization when we assemble it. So I keep my magnets here in the right position and you see I glue it one here. So I will glue one on each missile and then we will glue one with the right polarization of course on the, on, on uh, the, we are going to glue uh, on the hull of the plane. So we put uh, we have to use um, uh, cyanoculite in that case. My way to know what is the top is I paint the top before assembling to know that I'm doing in the right polarization and I'm always doing the same polarization. So and then I put this here and this is done. We have to be careful when we assemble it that the glues completely dry before putting them next to each other. If not, we are going to suffer that they jump out of the glue. So as you can see, it's quite a straightforward at this point. We put some glue here. We, I paint this first to be sure that uh, just in case the, 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 I, it's falling down or something like that. To be sure that I do in the right, um, you can do any color you want. So I just put a mark to be sure that I'm doing in the right position. So yeah, you have to do this before. So I take this out, and I know that the mark should go. As you can see, this time I took two of them. So this is not right. I will. I want to to be sure that I'm, I'm taking just one. Okay. You can see sometimes it can be difficult to separate them. Okay. And yeah, there is a little bit still rest of paint. Of course, after manipulating, most of the paint is gone. We need to paint them, and then it's there. Put it separated from the other missiles. Try not to put them too close. No. Yes, this is one that was painted quite time ago. I want to be sure, okay, this is not the right way to put them. This is the right way. Okay. So we have this part here have to be the top part. So I will make a mark. Take the missile Put some glue I'm using the most centered one To avoid to have more uh, To minimize the momentum Once this is in, in the plane Take one No, this one's one Okay, it's in position, put it on the other side of the table. Avoid to have metallic things around you at this, when you are doing this operation and any other th things that can interact with the magnets. 
of course we cannot use I cannot use this tool because the magnet wants to get to be attached to the tool. Let's put some paint. The paint is just a reassurance that I'm doing always the same process and I'm not messing up. In that one I will put here. This can be one of the challenging because the surface is not completely flat. Let's see how it goes. You see, this is the reason of putting some paint because then you can identify easily if you are doing always in the same position. So we put the paint, although most of the paint normally is most of the paint is wrapped out with the finger. So I will keep doing that, and I will I will be back once I magnetize all all the missiles. So to keep working on the missile part now I'm going to glue this the support of the missiles here uh, so yeah this is not no, not a lot of mystery we just put and uh, we first glue the supports and then we are going to glue the magnets on the support of the missiles we're going to glue the second magnets okay So we put this here, be sure that it's completely flat. Okay, and we'll let it dry before doing any additional work. So this is not well glued yet. Okay. So I put it in the support to avoid this touching any part. Leave it on the support there. And now while this is drying, I want to show you what I, the magnets are completely uh, the magnets the missiles here are now completely uh, with the magnet. And how we know that all the missiles have the right polarity. So I pick one and I check that they repel each other okay if they repel each other I put this apart and I take the next one and they, he should repel all the other missiles so if repelling put it apart and take another one if repelling means that the, I'm doing the right polarity in them all it's repelling it's repelling so you see it's a very easy way to confirm so you see it repels so it goes to the side too it means that it's in the right polarity if they were in the in the in the if they were attracting one the missile will jump into the next one one to each other so here is shown really that they repel each other Perfect. So we have all the missiles in the right polarity. So now we are ready to start painting the missiles. And the first thing, each missile I will try to do a different thing. Uh, I was wondering if I want to do this. I will do the, the head of the missile in bronze color. So I will follow the same process that I did for all the other bronze things. I will take, I will use Balthasar Gold as a base and I will give a layer of Balthasar Gold on the missile head. I will do the, the same for all the missiles and 
Yeah, and this is not a lot of explanation that you need here. It's not going to be anything different of what I explained on the other steps. So I just put some Balthazar gold. Okay. The advantage of magnetizing is that as this is one shot weapon, once you do the shot you can take the weapon out of the of the vehicle to and then the, you can use the same weapon as the counters to know how many shots you still have or how many missiles you still have active. You see I do a layer, I will do the same for all the other missiles. So now the Balthazar Gold is done on the missile. Next step, as I did in, in all the other things, I will apply a wash of Agrax air shade. I will try to put them in vertical position so in a, to avoid that this is touching any part, I will use this tool. To hold them, it's going to be tricky. You have to be careful not to damage the missile, so I will not put a lot of pressure. You see. So we are going to put them here. Uh, once if it's matching. The point is to avoid that once we apply. Okay. Okay. This is enough I don't want to put too much pressure because I don't want to damage so what I will do is I will take standard brush and I will do a wash on the missile head naturally the, the wash by gravity will go down so for me this will be okay I want to keep the front part of the missile much clearer and the bottom part of the of the head darker this will, will work perfectly for me I don't want to do a big wash, uh, a strong wash as this is very flat it's just to to be sure that I have the same color as the other bronze parts. See, I do this here and I let them dry. I will do the same with that missile, so I just apply the wash. And I let them die on the clamp in this position Okay, so a part of the missiles, I also have these weapons. All the techniques that I will use in these weapons are the same that I'm using on the missiles. So I will not go into details. 
Here, for example, I will paint this in bronze, I will follow exactly the same thing with here. Here, I will paint almost everything on blacks, and I will do some green color here, some like small gems. I will do the same in some other missiles. So, I will paint them off camera because it, they are not adding value to to the work I'm doing. The only thing that I will do then of uh, in camera is these things. This part normally have to be assembled before putting these parts together. So if you don't see the need to be able to exchange between these two weapons, you have to glue this at the bottom part of of the fuselage before assembling. No, it's not possible to put them in. So I will need, and I, this is a little bit of a mistake from my side, because there is no way that you can put them in now. Okay, the hole is too small for them to go in. So I will need to sand all this part and make it small enough to be able to go into the hole. The thing I will, I want to do is I want to magnetize this to be able to exchange. And I thought that I was was possible to put them after assembling. This is a mistake from my side. You cannot put them now. So I will need to sand them and to make this part small enough to pass through the hole. So in case that you don't see the need, and really this is not a big need to do ex to exchange between if you don't have the need to exchange between these two weapons, glue them to the fuselage before assembling. Uh, now I will I will explain you how to solve this issue when you don't do that. Okay? So uh, all the stuff on the weapons are going to be the same for these weapons and for the missiles. I will explain on the missiles, I will not go into detail on the weapons. And yeah. And let's go. Let's continue working. Now I will have to wait until the watch is completely dry and I will work on these weapons while the watch on the missiles is drying. The next step on the missiles after doing the watch is I will paint them uh, the black part. And first I will apply a layer of black uh, all over the missile uh, because as I did on the rest of, of the of the plane I want to be sure that I have a uniform and the same black for everything and I want to cover the magnet as well. So the magnet can be a little bit tricky to cover but just this is not the right brush. So. But just uh, do a thin layer of black before painting uh, before doing the highlights as I did with the uh, other parts on the on the plane so no more to say here. So keep working on, on the missiles. Uh, I want to, to, to prepare also the location for, for the missiles here on the plane. So what I will do is I will take off this pass here because I will put the magnets on this position. So I go flat. I will take all these pins out. With the knife, we fine tune that it's completely flat. I was waiting that this was completely dry before doing that. Knife will not go easily there, so we can use this tool to Can be that you damage a little bit the paint. <laughs> okay, so you see. And now we are going to glue the magnets here. So I put this aside, I take my magnets. The first thing we have to, to ensure is that we put the right 
polarity. So this is the right polarity. This has to be the part looking down. So I will take like So, the same operation as we did on the missiles, we take a super glue or cyanocolate, put glue here, do one, and then the rest of will do off camera. So we put the little magnet in the position that we used to have the pin and then we test. So this is how we look like once is so this is okay. And one magnet should be enough to hold this in position. So I will keep magnetizing the other ones, holding the same as a small dot of super glue and the magnet. We put all the magnets in position, now we can test with the missiles that they, they can be placed correctly. We'll test just with one group of missiles. As you can see, all the missiles can be put in position. Of course, they are not painted yet, just testing. We can put this base. So we can keep the missiles in position. And yeah, they are quite stable. So we are finished with the magnetization and then we are going to do the paint job and we will keep working on the paint job on the missiles. So one thing that I want to share with you and to prevent you from maybe doing similar mistake is this part, when it's assembled, will not go into this hole. Hey, sorry, I'm not showing this well in camera. So this is the location or the place for the this gun. So you can have a, a twin link a splinter rifle or you can have a splinter cannon. Okay. So one thing that I want to show with you is once it's assembled this thing will not go will not pass into the hole. As you can see here. So what I need to do because I want to, to be able to, to have the ability to exchange this weapon is one thing that I had to do is I had to um, sand this part all around to make it smaller and now this part will be passing through that. I need to sand it a little bit more because I had the magnet and then I got and then I will encast a magnet here in this inside okay so I need to sand it and then I will put a magnet inside this this part of the ship 
So in that way, you can you can put him in again. Okay. So this is one thing that you have to know. If you don't if you don't need to change weapon in future, no no need to to do this, and then be careful that you assemble this before assembling all the parts together. So now what I'm doing is with a file I'm making this part smaller to be um, sure that this will go smoothly into the hole. And this is a little bit time consuming but I, at this moment, yeah, I, I see that there are two builds for this for this um, vehicle. So you can um, equip it as anti-infantry and then you want to have the splinter cannon with the necrotoxic um, missiles. Or you can just use it as an anti-vehicle and then you don't want to invest the points on the splinter cannon. So as these options are still open and I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to fill this in on the battlefield, I prefer to have the two options open. So I will be sanding that and, and making it smooth enough to be able to introduce it easily into the hole like you can see here. So I need to make this part even smaller that you can see and then I will I will show you how is the final assembly. I'm doing the same with this part. So one thing that first I sand everything down once it's sand I will do a hole to encast the magnet as you can see here. So I will be working on that. Uh, I don't think I have to show in camera. It's just with a file First, I, this flat part, I make it as low as possible. I put it like that. Be careful not to damage the weapons. And this is why I prefer to use a file. So, I keep doing that. You see, until I the, this part is small enough. So I will be doing that, and I will be back once I to show how I cast the the magnet. This is, I make it small. At the end, I, I use knife to help me. And what I will use next is I will take the drill, and I will drill a hole to encast the magnet here. Uh, the drill I have is not big enough so what I will do with my knife is I start working to make the, this hole bigger. Okay, so be careful in that step because the part is <laughs> pretty small and it's pretty easy that you have your fingers very close to that so but what you want to do is to make a hole to allocate the magnet here I will give a try I will do I will take just one magnet, it's going to be easier. Keep the other ones here. You can use the same knife. Take it with you. Okay, you see the hole is not big enough yet. So I keep it in my knife I take it all with my knife. Take it here. And I keep working to make the hole bigger.
So this can take some time, I will be working on that and then I will show you once the whole, but this is the, 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 the main idea. So I have to make, normally when you work with a knife like that, you make the whole conical, you don't make it really with the walls vertical, so you need to try to avoid that as much as possible, it's almost impossible to avoid, but when you have the right dimness, oh, this is, we'll check it again. I need to work a little bit more. No, it's good enough. Okay. So the thing we have to test now is that we put the right polarity. So this is not the right polarity. They should repel to each other. So turn it. And I check that I have the right polarity. Now I have the right polarity. So this is the part that have to go on the top. So on this, I will do the other way around. I think before I have it be better. So this is, see now they attract, attract, they have attraction. So this is the part that have to go inside. Once it's assembled, they have to repel each other to show that they have the same polar, the polarity in the same direction. So what I will do, is I will put glue on this hole. And then I go with my knife and I leave it there. Oh, this is. You have to use, if you have a, mo a, a modeler plastic tool, to be sure you press it in the right position. Of course, don't use a metal tool because then the magnet will go into the metal. So this done, and now I leave it apart. Okay. So what's next step that I will do? If you remember, I paint, I, I, I applied a layer of black on the black parts here. So I will do the same highlight that I did uh, in all the other. Um, parts of the plane. So I will start with etching gray. Okay. I will and so I will start applying etching gray on the edges. Right. It's the same process that I follow for this. For the whole, this is why I will not now invest a lot of time because it's a repetition of what I did before. I will just do this part here, and you can assume that I will do the same for all the missiles and all the weapons. And to save time, I will not paint the. I will not highlight the main body of the missile. I will just highlight these parts, okay? I will do this part in front of you and I, you have to assume that all the missiles will follow 
exactly the same process except the neck of epoxy that I will show you a different way because I want to paint the front of the neck of epoxy with a greenish color so you see I did this part now we'll take downstone as I did on, on the main on the fuselage of the plane I will do a second highlight with downstone leaving the previous highlight visible of course if not okay you can see Okay, and then I will take administratum grey. Is called yeah, administratum grey. Is the before was called thin fortress grey. And with this administratum grey, I will just do the most extreme exterior edges. So this one, for example, this one here. just to emphasize the sharpness of these parts okay this and this this is what I'm going to do and I will repeat all in all the missiles in all the wings but I don't think I need to repeat this on camera for them all so here is a closer shot I think with better light so this is what I'm going to do and I will repeat this for all the missiles. So I will be working on that, doing that, and I will be back once I have highlight all the weapons and all the missiles doing that. The on, then the only pending thing is I'm going to do here green gems, I will do this later. And also at uh, this part I will do the same process but highlighting to green instead of highlighting to uh, grey. So keep tuned and I will be back soon um, with the rest of the parts. So now that the, all the highlights are, are done uh, on the black areas and I did this for all the weapons and missiles, I followed the same process for all of them, I will paint the gems as you see here. Okay, This is going to be the next work. I hope you can see this on camera. Okay, so what I will do, I will paint first with Dark Angels Green, the gems. I will do this on camera, but uh, normally I will do all the colors now in one of the missiles. And I did this one, but the idea is that I, I will do more batch painting. So I will play first one green and then the other one for all the missiles. It's going to be, I guess faster for me. In that case I paint I'm painting all the gems you can see with Dark Angels Green. And I only do the ones that are on the black parts. I will not do the ones here in the metallic parts. This I will leave it here at a side. And now I will take this one that I did before and it's completely dry. I will use Warstone Grey, I sorry, Warstone Green to do the next layer. What I will do is I will paint here the bottom part, leaving part of the top with the darker green. So I take this color and I paint it. As you can see, leaving part of the bottom of the top, sorry, on darker green. I will do the same on the other side.
Okay, and at the bottom I will try to follow always the same uh, positioning of the bright. So that is the same that I do in the plane. So the bright is going to be always on the left side of the direction of the of the missile. So I will put it like that. Okay. Next step, I will use Mood Green, that is this one, um, in the past it was called also Scorpion Green, and I will make a thin line more towards the bottom, so as you can see here, following the shape of the gem. Okay, and once this is done, I take white and I will apply like that. A thin dot. It's more than a lot, it's, uh, it's try to make a very short line. Okay, so and I have another missile done. Let me see if I can do a better shot. So this is how it's looking like. Here we have the different missiles painted. This is the one. So this is the position of the missile on the plane. Okay. So this one. Here we have another example. Okay. So this is done, and now I need to do all the gems on all these weapons that are highlighted. So I will be back once all the gems are done. So now I did all the gems on the missiles and what I'm doing next is I'm doing some highlights. So I'm working on the bronze and I'm doing some highlights with Sikorax bronze. So this one. Okay. And what I do is I first I highlight these protuberances here and then I will take a bigger brush okay and I will do a very soft dry brush on the extreme. You can start from top and going down in the way that I give some additional highlight. Okay, and you can just do very soft over the this part, but this is the, the thing. Okay, one another thing that I, I, I need to correct, so you I, this, I do this as an example and then I will do all the others off camera of course. So then the other thing that I will do is as you can see when I I let them I let them drying um, in that position with the, uh, when I did the wash and you see the wash is accumulated at the base but there are some parts that the wash didn't go well in so what I will take is I use um, this is called dryad bark and I will apply a little bit on these parts to make okay so to, to, to have the right 
shading at the bottom. Okay, so something like that. In that way, it looks much more uniform, and we don't see this this misses from the wash. So, and then this missile is now done. Can do the same with this one. So I will go first on the bottom part. Hope you can see this on camera. Here, for example, I will go like that to make look like the rest. Okay. And this one that has not been darkened, I will not do anything. Maybe just here around this protuberance, I will apply a little bit, but I will not go to the bottom. I'll leave it like that. You have to, I, I use this just to, to make the wash look better. And if the wash didn't went down, in all the missiles, well, not all the missiles have to have the dirtiness in the same position. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going down. This should be enough. Now I take the big brush. I do first this part. You can do with a big brush. You need a small one to do this. I will do also this one. I dry the brush and then I apply here. Okay, we'll do the next one. Okay, and the next one. So I do this as a example, these four missiles. Okay. These ones I will just again I will just put a little bit here. You can see. So I will keep doing that and I will be back once this is done on the missiles. Uh, these two missiles, these two type, I will consider done, nothing else needs to be done on that missiles. So we are going to finish these weapons. Uh, for these ones, I want to show you uh, what highlights that I will do uh, on green here. And I will, this will be the next step. So here you see how the missiles now that are painted are matching. Uh, what you see that they are very easy to exchange now with the magnets. So I can exchange them pretty easily. So I can, and we can use the configurations that we want. So if we want two shatter mine missiles and, and two uh, monastic missiles, here we have the combination. So yeah, the magnets are working pretty well. So, this is one thing that I wanted to show you. Now I take them out because I want to paint. We need to paint now the magnets in black. I just mentioned here I will paint this all this on black. And of course, there is not um, any mystery here. I will just do a, a thin layer of black on top of this. Other thing that I want to explain is I also I leave this without magnets, the, the, these weapons. Sorry, can I map it? Ok, 
okay so these are the you can I can use the disintegrators you see they match perfectly and they are not loosey so you can play them with all magnets and it's, they are not difficult to put in but in the case of the the dart lenses I need to add a little bit I don't know if you will see that let me see if you can see this in camera so I need to add a little bit of adhesive tape here I add a little bit of adhesive tape here to make it thicker to make this thing this pin thicker I needs to be able to fix it better in position but just with this small tweak adding a little bit of, of adhesive tape is fixed in position and I don't need, you see, it's not falling down so I don't need to add a magnet there neither so I can use these weapons without magnets, just putting them in position the other thing that I want to show you how at the end I finalize here you will see that I add a magnet inside and it, I will paint it now in black but you see if I want to use the splinter cannon I just slide it in okay if I want to use the double splinter rifle I also can slide it in so I can use the two type of weapons okay so I can use, I can personalize the flyer as I want now and the only step I need now to work is I will paint this on black here yeah, I can keep these weapons apart, this is this I consider these weapons also finalized we'll make some better, better pictures in my next video we'll do the, the show off video or the showcase video so here what we are going to do is just apply a little bit of black it's more important the side because once the missile is put in place but as we as we want to use this feature also to to know how many missiles I still I, I shot and how many as, in that way I can use the same missiles as a counter so just when I shoot one missile I can take it out from the plane so yeah I paint all this in black I will not do any highlight on the magnet of course is a feature that I don't need to I don't think you need to to make a take okay and once this is dry as the magnet and the area of the magnet will receive the impact it touch it time we we put the missile I will as well varnish it so you see I just apply a layer of black the other thing that I will do now that I'm, I have, I'm using the black is you see here on the top of this wing is the primer didn't cover completely and I forgot to to paint before so what I will do is especially this part here I will go with black and I will paint the middle like that so yeah this is this pass we can consider finalized I put the plane back to the base you don't need to magnetize neither this is sliding very very smoothly on the base as you can see the glass is not assembled it's not glued sorry I'm thinking if I'm going to magnetize this to avoid that I'm losing the, 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 the glass of the Copic once it's assembled I love the color that it has I love how this red turned out so you see here I don't know with the light in the, in the path 
And now I'm going to show you how I will work the missiles, the Nekobo, Nekobo toxic missiles, I think are called, or something like that. The one that have the Nekotoxin missiles. So, I first I will start with Caliban Green. Caliban Green is a little bit darker and greyish than the Dark Angels Green. I will do one of these spikes and you assume that I will do the same for all other spikes. So I paint almost the full spike just leaving very little on black with the Caliban Green. And this is these missiles are supposed to be make of poison, poison. So I like to give this look to give the look of a poisoned weapon. This greenish color. As this is like a biological or poison or chemical weapon, so then we are going to paint also this side. As you see, I'm painting almost the full spike, okay? After applying Caliban Green, I take a Warpstone Glow. And of course, I'm doing now all the colors, but when I'm painting the rest of the missile, I will first apply Caliban Green to all the missiles, then I will apply Warpstone Green. And I apply a little bit just following the edge okay I will put here on the top a little bit doing this and then I will go on the other side and do the same And finally, what I will, the last touch that I will do is I will take, use Mot, Mood Green, sorry, and I will just go to the top and do a fine touch like that. We make it visible also from the side, so we just do on the top of the you will see maybe this is too much okay just after uh, after dedicating all this time to the razor wing jet fighter i think it's worth at least to dedicate maybe i will never use this missile but at least if one day you have to use I can give the appearance they want. So this is how it's looking like, and this is what I will do. The last thing to complete this missile is that I show I will use Sikorax bronze and I will use I will paint this with Sikorax bronze, just this part. As the part is small enough, I don't think you need to do any other effect. Just apply a thin layer of super edge bronze here on the extreme. And that's all. So I will do the same for here, here and for all the, the rest of the missiles. But I think, yeah, I will be back once I finish to close up this video. So here we have all the different weapons. No painted. 
and ready to be assembled on the razor wing. So this is the last ones that I did. This hole at the end I did the I think it's called the Neco Toxic uh, missiles. So all the weapons here, four missiles of this type, four of these, four of these, dark lancers, disintegrators, and the two splinter options. The splint the uh, twin link splinter rifle and the splinter cannon ready to be assembled on the razor wing so this is finalizing here the tutorial uh, this was the last part the missiles and, and the different weapons to be assembled uh, and now yeah this is finalizing and I will be back in a new video with a showcase and to show with you how all is looking when it's assembled and the different configurations uh, last thing that I want to explain is I will apply um, matte varnish on this I will apply in that case this varnish so okay so just a, a coat there to protect um, and because it's it's going to wrap and it's going to clutch this time we assemble I will put some extra protection there so that's all please leave your comment below let me know what you think uh, let me know if you like this type of tutorials that are taking quite long but I, I like to go into the detail let me see uh, let me know if you find that they are interesting or not uh, so I just want to thank you uh, everybody for watching this video like if you like it please comment and thanks a lot for watching see you again later bye